Good evening and welcome to the San Bernardino City Council meeting of June 12, 2012. Uh, roll call, please. Councilmember O'Connell. Here. Mayor Ruane. Here. Councilmember Medina. Here. Councilmember Salazar. Here. And uh, Vice Mayor Ken Ibera is excused with notice. I'd like to thank the Garden Club for the arrangement they always provide for us. And uh, I would like to ask, uh, let me see, Greg, our city attorney tonight, would you please lead us in the pledge? We do have two announcements. The first announcement is regarding our reconstruction of the uh, Crestmore uh, neighborhood, phase two utility replacement project. Phase two of the utility replacement project within the Crestmore neighborhood will be starting next week. This project will replace water lines, sewer lines, and storm drains in the fire damaged portion of the neighborhood. And while this is exciting news, there will be some inconvenience to the neighborhood. The construction will require periodic road closures during the daytime working hours and some traffic detours throughout the neighborhood. The first such road closure will begin on June the 25th. Glenview Drive between San Bruno Avenue and Claremont Drive will be closed to through traffic from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. for the entire week of June 25th. A notice will be sent to the neighborhood in the next several days detailing this closure. The phase two project is expected to last from next week through the end of September. The next phase of work, phase three, affecting the remainder of the neighborhood will start shortly thereafter in the fall. The city will try to minimize the inconvenience to residents as much as possible. Construction updates are posted on the project website, uh, www.rebuildcrestmore.org, and the city will continue to send out periodic construction newsletter updates and hold open house meetings. We appreciate everyone's patience as we rebuild the neighborhood. I have one other uh, very short announcement. It turns out that a gentleman named James Hahn of San Bruno is actually uh, competing in the United States Open at the Olympic Club. And he's a resident and he uh, plays from uh, the, the uh, Lake Merced Golf Club. So good luck to James. Uh, presentations, we don't have any presentations this evening. Review of the agenda. Anything on the agenda? Mm -mm. Like to change, move? Okay, approval of the minutes of the regular city council meeting of May 22nd. 2012 in the City Council study session of June 6, 2012. Errors, corrections, omissions? Seeing none, they will be approved as submitted. Consent calendar, all items are considered routine or implemented earlier council action and may be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion unless requested by a council member, citizen, or staff. Questions or action on the consent agenda? Move to approve consent calendar. What item? Uh, item C. C. Okay. Um, I'll <coughs> therefore, move to approve items A and B of the consent calendar. Second. A motion is second on the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item C is waived. The first reading and introduce the ordinance imposing a 2.341 rate increase requested by Recology San Bruno for 2012 2013 to be effective July 26, 2012, as presented in the notice of proposed increase mailed to all property owners. Michael. Thank you, Jim. Uh, this, um, this ordinance uh, appeared before the council earlier and uh, we voted on it and I believe we voted unanimously to uh, pass it along with two other ordinances uh, that, I, that I was told at the time did pass. Uh, now they're being reintroduced. But rather than just have this go into the consent calendar, I wanted to make sure that we understand uh, and uh, inform the public in terms of what was changed in this version of the ordinance versus the original. And um, so if we could get some clarification, please. Mm -hmm. Uh, the change in the garbage ordinance is the removal, an incorrect removal uh, reference to the health and safety code that required a uh, two-thirds vote of the council to approve the ordinance. Okay. All right. Thank you. And, and if I could uh, ask our acting uh, city attorney 
if we could get some clarification on uh, the reason why that uh, language was uh, changed. Well, the, as I understand, is this on? As I understand the issue, uh, there was a recital in the initial ordinance that referred to a health and safety code section uh, that referred to a, a voting requirement that's not accurate. So the, the reason we're having you re, uh, reintroduce the ordinance is to make sure that the ordinance has the correct language in it and does not refer to an incorrect um, reference to a health and safety code section. The material terms of the ordinance are the same. Okay. And I hate to put you on the spot because I know that you, you're walking into this and uh, probably don't have a lot of the history, but in, in your experience as city attorney in other cities, <clears throat> has it been your experience that the, the reference to the health and safety code is fairly common in uh, these ordinances as they pertain to city fees? I, I would say um, it, it's just this is the, the standard is wrong for general law city. Um, the the two-thirds is not required. Um, I don't. I can't speak to why it was in the original um, uh, uh, resolution or recitals of the ordinance, but I can answer okay. that. It, um, let me just elaborate a little bit further. The specific health and safety code reference is for a two-thirds voting requirement in a, the event that the collection of the fee or charge that is the subject of the ordinance, whether that collection is via the property tax rolls. That is not the case here, has never been the case here, and um, frankly, staff is a, a little bit um, uh, unclear. We do not know how or why uh, that language appeared in the ordinance. It, it appears to us that it has just been carried incorrectly for a number of years um, in the same ordinance that we, that we routinely present um, each year for consideration of the rates. The city attorney, who is um, on vacation tonight, uh, originally opined that the error could be viewed as a minor clerical correction that would not have required reintroducing the ordinance for first reading or subsequent second reading in an abundance of caution and in order to provide um, a clear and complete, uh, clear and complete opportunity for the public to understand what the action is, um, we've reintroduced it uh, okay. via the consent calendar. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm certainly not a, an attorney, and, uh, and I did read the, the text of the, of the, the state constitution that uh, was changed by Proposition 218, where it refers to this, and also the text of the, the Health and Safety Code that addresses the same topic. And in, in my interpretation of it, I didn't see that that particular piece of the health and safety code addressed only um, a situation where it would be put on the county tax roll. There was some mention to it, but I don't see it specifically addressed in the section that addresses the fees. And it almost seems like the two pieces of legislation, they overlap with one being more stringent than the other. Well, I, I understand that. Um it's a very complicated area of, of uh, statutory and constitutional authority. Um, I've done um, in, in uh, the other city I represent. We just did our garbage rates uh, a, a few um, weeks ago, and we did it by ordinance, um, and it did, we did not require a two-thirds vote. I think that's the rule. We do not, just like San Bruno here, we do not put it on the property tax roll. It's, it's a rate-setting procedure whereby it gives the, the city council sets the rates for the service that's provided through your uh, franchise with Recology, uh, and then that is the authority for Recology to put that on a regular bill that goes to the residents. Okay. So, the, so the, the, I can't speak to why it's two-thirds to put it on the property tax roll. It's probably a technical or policy reason that, that that's um, uh, because uh, it's something that uh, is more formal, if you will, because it um, requires a uh, action in involving the, the county tax collector. Um, that may be the reason I, I'm speculating a little, but the, the main point here is that, and I've talked with Mr. Zaffirano about this particular issue, that the, the, the solution to the issue of um, 
the reference was to reintroduce the ordinance. Um, we're confident that the, the issue, uh, uh, that the process is appropriate. It does not require a two-thirds vote. Okay. And my, my final question, um, if for some reason somebody challenged the city on this particular thing because the language was changed to a less stringent uh, version of the language, worst case scenario, we would just have to repeal the fee increase or are there, could there be other consequences to the city? Thank you. That would that would entail. Um, put, I'll, I'll repeat myself for the for the benefit of the audience and the recording. That would entail a um, a writ proceeding in Superior Court, um, where someone would say that, in essence, that um, the council did not follow the right procedure. That would be their allegation, um, and uh, the remedy in court would be do the do it the right way. If if that what happened to be the wrong way, but um, we're. The process you're employing is the correct way. Okay, thank you. All right. with, with that, I will uh, introduce. Uh, uh, okay, just to so just seven okay. C. So, um, all right. So I'll uh, move <coughs> to approve item C on the consent calendar. Second. Motion second to approve the consent calendar item C. Uh, on the question, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Item number eight, public hearings. Notices have been published, posted, and mailed. We don't have a public hearing this evening. Item nine, public comment on items not on the agenda. <clears throat> it is the council's policy to refer matters raised in this form to staff for investigation and or action where appropriate. The Brown Act prohibits the council from discussing or acting upon any matter not agendized pursuant to state law. Name and, uh, and street, please. Harry Peterson, Senior Court. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, City Council. Uh, last time I spoke to you, uh, as I recall, I said the agenda was not posted <coughs> in the appropriate time before the meeting, and I'm reporting the same thing happened again this, uh, for this meeting. But the reason I came was because <coughs> the notice of proposed increases to water and wastewater rates, in it it says that... Uh, the water rates go up 9.8% uh, 9 and the sewer rates 10 point something. I made some calculations. And while it may be that your uh, staff or consultants calculated that 9.8%, but it, when I run a calculation for the water rate differences from the existing rates, for people billed at 15, 20, 25, and 30 units, which covers quite a span of water usage, I find that the percent difference is an increase of from 20 to 50 percent. And in three of the cases, it's uh, more like 50 or 50 percent or more. I think this is a material difference from the way the rates increase is advertised to what it actually is. And in order to do this calculation, all you have to do is calculate how much you would pay for water at 15, 20, 25, and 30 units according to current rates and according to the proposed rates. It's not a complicated calculation. I suggest you might want to try it. I think if you wanted to actually have the rates go up 9.8%, what you would do is calculate the rates the way they are now and then add on 9.8%. So I think uh, there's a problem with the way the proposed increases were advertised, but there's another effect that this is going to have when the rates, when, when a homeowner actually gets a bill for a 20, with a 20% to 50% increase on it, they're going to do exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut my water use. I'm not going to pay anymore. And what that'll do is, if there's enough people like me who would rather not spend more money, the city will end up having to raise the rates again, or they're not going to have any money to spend on capital improvement projects. 
<coughs> I try to, I try to, uh, I don't like people who present me with annoying problems and they have no solution. So the solution I would recommend to you is just add 9.8% to each bill. And probably no one will change their usage. So it's a pretty easy solution. And uh, uh, for the record, I'm still in favor of a rate increase. At the same time, I'm in favor of full, timely, and accurate public disclosure. Thank you very much. Thank you. John Bear earlier, San Anselmo. I'm going to assume that shopping for food at a firehouse is not in their contract, and that shopping for food for the firehouse can be done fully and online. That shopping for the firehouse can be done online. It's not necessary to take a truck and three men to Safeway or Lenardi's or Lucky's to go shopping. When a truck and three firemen leave the firehouse to shop, that station is <coughs> short in personnel and equipment. When the firemen take this unnecessary, unspoken, and unwritten perk, they leave the citizens of San Bruno vulnerable, and it's going to come back to bite us. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. I'm kind of afraid of the microphone. <laughs> It's all right, just state your name and your street. <laughs> okay. So. Um, my name is Sarah Glasscock, and I live at 285 North San Anselmo. And um, I've lived in or around this neighborhood on and off for the past 15 years. Um, before today, I had never attended a city council meeting. Um, I'm here to raise what about, I'm here to raise an issue about what I feel is a, is a pretty blatant inequity um, and how the city handles parking enforcement through fines, the towing of cars, and the fact that these rules only apply to my neighborhood and all others which are located east of, Santa, of, of El Camino. Every other week on rotating days, just about every, other, every street in San Anselmo has street sweeping. In my neighborhood near the heart of San Bruno, if I don't move my car before the time posted, parking patrol comes by and leaves me a $38 ticket. The officer that patrols our street is generally pretty understanding and has let us slide on a couple of occasions where I've had either a flat tire or we were waiting for a car part we ordered to arrive. As, as renters, we do not act, have access to off the street parking. When our truck breaks down, we have nowhere to park but on the street so my husband can repair it. We don't have a lot of money laying around to pay these parking tickets or to take our car to the car dealership. My husband does our car repair. Um, I know I speak for every neighbor and city resident I've discussed this with, with when I ask the question, why are the neighborhoods east of El Camino subject to fines for parking when the rest of San Bruno isn't? Why are we the only ones playing what I like to call musical cars twice a month? Why is it okay for someone who lives on Oak or Bennington Drive to park their car, truck, boat or trailer on the street for any number of days, weeks, or even years. I actually know of this is happening. I purchased my car from someone who lives in the Crestmore neighborhood. And before I bought it, it sat parked on the street in front of his house for over four years. Never once in four years was it ticketed or was there a violation or, or was there a notice that was in violation of the ordinance that states your car needs to be moved every 72 hours or is subject to being towed. If I leave my truck in front of my house for three weeks, I get a notice to move. If I don't move, regardless of the reason, it's towed. Then I have even less money, right? After talking to a number of friends and neighbors about this issue, I decided to post an announcement to the San Bruno Patch website. The number, if the number of responses I have received in just a few hours is any indication, I think it's time to revisit this issue. And I'm not the only person that posted something about this. Um, go to sanbrunopatch.com and punch in street sweeping, and there's, there's a couple of pages worth of material if you guys ever feel like reviewing it. Um, I received an equal number of responses from people that live on both sides of El Camino, which I totally did not expect. 
Um, not only are those of us on the east side tired of being the only source of parking ticket fine revenue, but those people that reside on the west side neighborhoods are tired of their neighbor's cars, trailers, and boats taking a permanent residence on the street. And that's a direct quote. Um, it's my understanding that the rationale behind this ticketing practice has to do with the width of the street and the amount of parked cars in regards to the ability of the street sweeper to effectively cl clean the street. The streets within a six block radius of San Bruno Park are just as narrow and congested as the street where I live, which again is North San Anselmo. Um, an example would be is that if two cars are driving head on, it's difficult for either car to pull over to allow the other to pass, whether that's in my neighborhood, whether that's in the avenues, or whether that's on, say, Acacia, Acacia Avenue. Um, in addition, I, I drop my daughter off at Parkside School every morning. At 8 o'clock in the morning, the streets surrounding the school are just as congested as the streets surrounding my house after everyone leaves work. I don't notice any difference between my neighborhood in the heart of San Bruno and the areas surrounding San Bruno Park and Parkside Middle School. It's all just as crowded. So, so that, that to me is not a valid argument. Um, the more cars, there were more cars throughout San Bruno. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Um, there are more cars throughout all of San Bruno than there were in 1990, which is about when I estimate that this bogus ordinance went into effect. Um, while in the price process of writing this, I was able to immediately find statistical data that supports this claim. I feel this ordinance should never have been passed in the first place, and now reasons for having passed it are not even valid, or are, are no longer even valid. My proposed solution would be to patrol and ticket each street equally. If there is an issue with not having enough resources to hire the additional staff to patrol all of the streets in San Bruno, why not rotate the burden equally? For example, my street is currently ticketed on the first and third weeks of the month. Instead, ticket my street the first week of the month. On the third week of the month, find somewhere else to, to ticket on the other side of El Camino. Um, either all of San Bruno is subject to fines or no one in San Bruno is subject to fines. Um, I have absolutely no problem with the city collecting revenue through parking fines. I mean, that's fine. The, Every city needs revenue, especially now. Um, but I have a problem with the fact that the east side neighborhoods are being singled out. Thank you. All right, thank you. You have quite a few issues there. So uh, we, we heard them. We can't really do much about them this evening. But uh, the chief has heard those. And I'd like to get a report at the next meeting about a little history on what's happening and how things really have evolved over the last number of years. So uh, you're absolutely right. Thank you. To the chair. <coughs> and when the report, Mr. Mayor, when the report comes back, can they be notified so that they're aware of when the yeah. meeting is occurring? So if they wish to view it or be here in person to offer yeah. comments. Look at the next couple of agendas and we'll try to get some information on that. City Manager. Uh, Ms. Mr. Mayor, if I might just uh, ask your uh, agreement to uh, schedule this for the first meeting in July. Yeah, I think we can fine. do a better job between now and then rather than be yeah, before the I next know meeting. The PD is pretty busy around the 4th of July, so uh, right. yeah, think, that, that's fine. Yeah, and I think we want to look also at the at the issue of the um, utility of or the need for the uh, related to street sweeping. So that will involve the work of several of our departments. Yeah, no, I understand it's more than just uh, ticketing and revenue. That right. that's a, sort of a, a secondary. Or, you know, a lot of that was started many years ago because we had a lot of flooding in the east side, and a lot of that is to in fact keep those storm drains clean. So that's part of it, but that's not the whole story. So we'll get it for you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, sure. Thanks. Come back often. You weren't that bad with the microphone, you know. You, <laughs> <laughs> you did just fine. Thank you. Item number 10, conduct of business. Uh, we have three items, A, B, and C. The first one is to adopt a resolution increasing the capital improvement project appropriation for the sanitary sewer condition assessment project by $440,000 for a total appropriation of $1 million $435,000. We're going to adopt these separately, but I'll read them all now. The second is adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to amend the contract 
the FIOLA, formerly JF Pacific Liners, increasing the contract amount by $319,000 for a total contract amount of $1,239,000 for sanitary sewer condition assessment project and approving a total construction contingency in the amount of $63,000. And number three is adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to approve a contract with Homes International in an amount not to exceed $97,000 for sanitary sewer condition assessment project support and oversight. Staff, please. Honorable <coughs> Mayor, Council Member, good evening. Uh, in our presentation, I will uh, go over the purpose of the project in the beginning. Then uh, I will let uh, Dennis Bash, uh, the service manager for sewer, to, uh, sh uh, to take you through the process, how this will, uh, is working in the real life. And then I will come back uh, to uh, take you through the history of this project and uh, our recommendation. Uh, as you uh, are uh, very well aware of, uh, the city provides uh, sanitary um, collection services for the residents of our city. And uh, as any uh, sewer uh, system uh, operator, uh, the city has to manage our system uh, effectively uh, in a certain given uh, uh, regulatory environment. The Water Board, back in 2006, uh, passed a uh, issued a order setting uh, clear expectation uh, how those uh, uh, sewer system operators has to manage their uh, system and to meet certain uh, regulatory requirements. In addition to the environment, uh, uh, regulatory environment, also is uh, critical for our rate payers to manage uh, our system for a uh, lower possible overall cost. Reason why is important for us to uh, proactively, as much as possible, uh, assess the problems in the system and to try to address them with, uh, in uh, proactive manner to minimize the cost. If you are reacting to any and you are fixing uh, the problem, overall will cost the trade payer more versus if you proactively address uh, those issues. Um, the most commonly known assessment tool, uh, how you are assessing the condition of the system, is uh, the video, uh, is uh, video, inspecting, uh, videoing uh, uh, the system. You are using then this information uh, to prioritize the work what you need to do on the system. You are prioritizing the work for spot repair or uh, line replacement or uh, different type of uh, maintenance activity as is uh, needed. I will let uh, Dennis to take you through a few uh, ins uh, video inspection to show you how that information can be used. Good evening, Mayor and Council. So again, as Clara said, that basically this is video inspection of sewer lines or sewer mains and some laterals uh, where a, a robotic camera is put into the line and it travels from one manhole to another uh, inspecting any and all problems. Uh, sometimes the lines are good, sometimes they're not. As you can see on the left, <clears throat> this is an area where pipe is missing. You can see basically the, the pipe close to you, it's cylindrical, and then there's a void and then you can see the cracked pipe on the other side of the void. Basically what's happened here is that the, the clay pipe has failed and dirt above the, above the uh, area of failure then sinks down and uh, usually a lot of the times the mains are in the street so you have vibration from cars uh, pushing down the dirt and then eventually a sinkhole forms. Uh, in this case, this, this pipe failure caused uh, almost a two foot void um, up on top of the asphalt uh, that we were lucky enough a car didn't a car didn't drive along and have a wheel fall into it 
Um, you can also see uh, on the picture on the left that there's debris, pipe pieces, rocks, dirt, and um, if we hadn't have caught this, I mean, in this case, we were able to see a sinkhole, but when those things accumulate, it, it stops the sewage from flowing freely, and it, uh, it eventually causes a, back, uh, a backup or a sanitary sewer overflow. On the right is an area where you have a pretty good cylindrical pipe, but then there's a, there's a crack or a missing piece of pipe that roots have found an entry into the line, and the root then grows, and it can grow to the point where it actually blocks total, total flow, and it also can um, trap solids as it goes by. So it, uh, it again makes a, a, uh, a blockage. So in these two cases, the one on the left, that's obviously a repair that we need to do. Uh, the one on the right, uh, we might not have to cause or, or use money to dig that, but we could, we could hit that with maintenance tools to remove the roots. And then once the, the roots are removed, then we can put the camera back in and then reassess it. The picture on the left is, is it's, it's hard to see, but this is basically grease that has uh, compounded on itself to almost take up uh, almost half of the pipe. So again, this, this can tell us that there might be a problem farther down the line. We obviously need to remove the grease so that we restore the, the uh, flow area <clears throat> within the pipe. So once we would, re we would remove that, we could use that information to assess whether or not is the next time we go to clean it, is this happening more often than not? Is it once every couple of years? Is this a repair that's needed? Can we hit this up with a maintenance, uh, a maintenance schedule? Dennis, are the, these all the same uh, diameter pipes? Or are they different? Uh, the one on the left here is a lateral. Um, if we go back, I believe those were mains. The one on the left, oh, the one on the left was a main, and the one on the right was a main. Which is diameter-wise six big? inch. Six inch. Okay. Six inch. Basically, though, even though it's one's a main, one's a lateral, a lot of the properties still stay the same of, of uh, the characteristical problem. Uh, I explained the picture on the left. On the right, uh, there's actually two problems here. You can see that the, that the pipe connection to the top left corner, uh, it's cracked and it's become offset. So it's as if you were to take a, a straight pipe cut in the middle and then move one down and move one up. There's also silt, it, silt in the pipe, which means that sometimes when you have offsets, dirt, rocks, debris, uh, comes down through those cracks and then settles out. So on this case, uh, we would go ahead and we remove the silt first to try to see if there was any other problems. And then we obviously know that there's a crack there and I would have to look farther back to see, okay, is this just one spot repair, or are there six on this, this one, what we refer to as a line segment, a sewer main between two manholes, and how far and how much money and how much uh, energy are we going to devote, uh, and what's the best bang for the buck in the sense of fixing one spot or fixing a larger area so that we don't have to come back and, and, and work towards our goal of, of reducing sanitary sewer overflows. I will take you through the history of the project itself. Back uh, in 2007, based on the need and also uh, on the set requirement, uh, the city went out for a bid and uh, uh, entered in a contract with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, the contractor to video inspect the known 63 mile uh, sewer, uh, sewer system at that time. Um, was only just uh, one uh, contractor uh, proposed to our uh, bid document and uh, uh, the city entered in a contract, uh, five year contract uh, with the contractor uh, Pacific Pipeline to uh, video inspect uh, the whole system estimate at that time uh, uh, for uh, 63 uh, miles. Uh, the unit price was 275 
uh, per linear feet of uh, video inspection. Our uh, information system uh, for our sewer system uh, improved, uh, was improved in the last few years, and our GIS system was updated, and our uh, level of information about our sewer system is much higher today versus back in 2007, reason why uh, became uh, always uh, at the end of uh, uh, this uh, uh, inspection process that uh, 22 additional uh, mile of sewer system exist and that uh, those additional uh, 22 mile of uh, system needs to be inspected uh, also. And uh, that is uh, the purpose of uh, and the recommendation for tonight uh, to, uh, ex uh, to extend uh, uh, the contract for uh, the video inspection of this additional uh, 22 uh, mile of uh, uh, sewer, uh, sewer uh, system with the same uh, unit price how was uh, how the city entered uh, in contract uh, with uh, Pacific Pipeline uh, back in 2007 for the same 2.75 uh, 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 per linear feet. Also based on um, the degree still of a certain uh, of uh, uncertainty about uh, the information on our sewer system is uh, our recommendation to include a 20% contingency to the contract if something uh, will come up uh, uh, during, uh, uh, the, uh, during uh, uh, the implementation of this contract that additional uh, segments need to be inspected to have enough flexibility in the contract uh, to uh, inspect uh, the whole uh, system. already uh, received some question and maybe um, maybe uh, our um, report uh, was a little bit misleading about uh, the need for uh, our uh, third action request to uh, enter in a uh, consultant contract in uh, project management support with uh, Holmes International. The reason uh, for our request uh, to uh, enter in a uh, consultant contract with Holmes International, one of uh, the known uh, wastewater experts in the field, is for them to provide us with um, uh, quality control and expertise support uh, for uh, the following task. They will uh, review uh, all of uh, uh, the video inspection for uh, the most severe uh, classified uh, defects in our system in order for uh, us to be able to prioritize those uh, uh, repair or actions based mm -hmm. on our uh, time uh, limitations set by the baykeepers. In our agreement with the baykeepers, certain uh, time limit was set uh, for those severe uh, defects in how long time those need to be addressed. Uh, this uh, uh, consultant will, re will reassess those uh, video, video uh, inspected sections to uh, verify if those were classified properly and what is the proper uh, repair for uh, that uh, defect will be. Also to take the re uh, remaining of uh, uh, the video inspections and uh, just uh, uh, verify from a quality point of view a certain uh, number of selected uh, uh, videos just to make sure that uh, the city is receiving the quality product, uh, what uh, is uh, the expectation for us to receive. The uh, other uh, task that they will help us with 
to make sure that uh, at the end of this project, the city will have a uh, searchable database to uh, be able to <coughs> easily prioritize the work needed to be done uh, as a follow-up from the result of uh, this condition as assessment. Also, uh, as a additional, they will also help us to schedule the work just to make sure that no segment of our system will be left uh, on, uh, will be left uninspected. Uh, These uh, three uh, additional uh, fund requests will, uh, will be a total of uh, $404,000 uh, increase to our existing appropriation. Uh, the prior appropriation for this project was uh, a $900,000 initially when the contract was approved in 2007. Th uh, this would be the additional construction cost for uh, $319,000 uh, for the additional 22 miles. The 20 percent proposed uh, contingency would be 63000 uh, Initially, uh, when uh, the construction uh, contract uh, was approved in 2007, also was included uh, in our CIP for 2007 and 9, uh, and uh, still approved in, uh, in our last CIP uh, uh, in 2009 and 10, a uh, 75,000 uh, appropriation for uh, project uh, support and oversight. From that uh, appropriated 75,000, still 39,000 uh, available uh, with that additional uh, fund request of 58,000 uh, then uh, will provide us with a 97,000 consultant contract for project uh, uh, oversight and support with uh, Holmes International. And this will bring the total project cost to a 1.435,000 uh, total project cost. Our recommendation uh, uh, is uh, for you to uh, approve the additional uh, appropriation of uh, 400, uh, for, uh, 440,000 uh, uh, to our CIP uh, project. Also to uh, authorize the city manager to amend the construction contract uh, with uh, the proposed 319,000 also for you to approve the contingency uh, project for uh, con a contingency budget of 63,000 and uh, to authorize the city manager uh, to enter in uh, a contract with Holmes International uh, for a not to exceed amount of 97,000 for uh, critical uh, project support and quality oversight uh, for uh, this project. This concludes our presentation, if, and if you have any question of us. Well, I just have one question or comment. Uh, I know it's a relatively small amount uh, as far as footage or mileage goes, but I want to make sure that uh, we're not having to video anything in the Crestmark Glenview area. All of the uh, video inspection in Crestmore area was done about a year ago, and the purpose at that time was uh, uh, that was part of the ongoing uh, inspection of the system, but the information also was used uh, to um, support the recommendation what uh, the STEM came back to you for recommendation to replace the system. But uh, uh, that uh, Crestmore neighborhood was inspected uh, about a year ago as part of this ongoing go around uh, inspection of the whole uh, system yeah. citywide. Any questions of staff? Just on your question, Mr. Right. Mayor, you said about a year ago it was done. Yes, uh, about a year ago. I can further define. I can look I at think the the exactly the date. The uh, date. Got lost somewhere in the question and the answer. <clears throat> if, if I could just interject, you may remember that 
in that time period, we were still actively in the process of evaluating the status of the infrastructure and the amount of uh, damage that might have occurred as a result of the explosion and resulting fire. <clears throat> so uh, it was done as part of the ongoing inspection program, but it also pre uh, predated the decision making and informed the decision making about replacement of the entire Crestmore infrastructure, which had not yet been a year ago or thereabouts. Um, that decision making and information gathering was still actively in process. Sorry, I wanted to say I, I think it's um, it's great that uh, the city's taking such a proactive uh, stance in collecting the information. I know that there's already a wealth of information that's been collected that's now in a database, and this video system is going to add on to it. Um, I hope my colleagues will uh, indulge me here, but I, I, I am intrigued by uh, what's what's going on. So I, I do have some questions and um, in, in terms of how this works and. Um, I think you partially answered one of my questions in terms of the contingency, and you said that would be uh, for additional segments should they be discovered. And so I was a little bit curious about how the initial estimate was developed, um, the additional that was discovered, how that was discovered that, that it existed, and why we would suspect that there, that there is additional um, segments that we may not know about. Um, this is tied uh, directly to the evolution of our information uh, about our uh, sewer system. Um, the sewer division, uh, alike uh, other, uh, other uh, division uh, in the city, in the last few years we were focusing on improving uh, very aggressively our GIS system, GIS information of our uh, uh, system. Back in 2001, uh, as, part of, uh, uh, as part of our uh, first master plan, a, a digital map of the system itself uh, was uh, produced, but based on everybody's experience, uh, that uh, the degree of reliability of that information wasn't very high. The reason why uh, was a, a very concerted uh, effort to uh, improve and to develop our GIS information and uh, uh, was a, um, uh, certainly um, uh, based on great work done by uh, the sewer division, and this is true for water and storm water uh, also, they were in able to improve uh, reliable information and the whole GIS information for our sewer system now is probably reliable to 95%. Uh, that would be uh, my closest estimate how reliable our GIS system is now uh, for uh, sewer. Back in 2007, uh, that was not available. And the reason why not knowing, just estimating, now is a matter of knowing uh, what is the length of our system. Okay. And, and is that the only, uh, the only construction risk? Uh, I think in the staff report, the, the word construction risk was used. So I was wondering if there are actual construction type activities or are these cameras basically lowered down in through a manhole and then allowed to run through the system? Uh, that would be the only risk what uh, I am aware at this time. If they have any problem that they cannot get the camera out or they are stuck or something, then typically our uh, uh, sewer division will respond and to help them uh, to uh, address the problem. But uh, the reason why I think that that's still a degree of uncertainty, this is the first project uh, when uh, the city is doing uh, our overall assessment of the system. And uh, it's just uh, uh, maybe there will be other issues which are 
unknown to us uh, right now. If will be not necessary, then of course the contingency is not spent. Okay. Yeah, I just did a quick calculation, and at the at the present rate, it comes out to about fourteen thousand dollars per mile. So our contingency would probably buy us about four and a half miles, maybe. So we're comfortable that that, that we've we've got it nailed down to that level of accuracy. L, uh, and will be our intent not to use one dollar of that contingency if it will not be necessary. Okay. Okay. And, um, and, and you did uh, just mention that this is the first go around with this, and so I was wondering about the, the five-year cycle. So th the proposal is to every five years reinspect all 100 percent of every, of every sewer? It is a set cycle uh, how, uh, how uh, you have to come back and to uh, reinspect the whole system. Also, is there are many other requirements that after any repair, uh, you have to reinspect that segment whenever you are doing uh, a, a repair or after a ASSO, you have to come back and to reinspect the system. How, uh, how that will be managed from now on after finishing this inspection of the system will depend on many many things. Uh, first, you have to assess, okay, what is, what is the de degree of the problem in the system? And then uh, it's included right now in our uh, CIP uh, budget for uh, future years purchase, a purchase of uh, uh, the video uh, inspection equipment. Uh, many cities, most of the cities, uh, went in that direction uh, to uh, really uh, uh, establish that skill set in their agency and to be uh, able to rely that uh, on that on ongoing basis. Uh, how the city will manage this uh, on long term uh, was was not discussed or uh, uh, decided until more information is not available for us. Uh, what really are uh, the most critical issues and problem which need, will need to be addressed based on the resu result of uh, this overall uh, assessment of the system. Okay. So there's a possibility maybe somewhere down the line we could contract with another city and have yeah. them do that for us. Is, it is very possible now in interim uh, basis. Is our intent to do as the next step uh, after this uh, pra uh, this uh, video inspection of the whole system will be done? Is our intent to go out for a on-call kind of contract? Uh, uh, who can help us after any SSO or any repair just to come in and to inspect? In the same time, right now is uh, the city in uh, discussion and uh, with the uh, city of South City, if uh, how they could help. They have uh, equipment and they are uh, just training their employee. They are just uh, improving their own skill set. That's why they are not at the level when they can make any commitment yet. But yes, that one other. Uh, uh, Avenue, but uh, the city will uh, research if that is a viable uh, alternative. In the same time, with the other alternative, uh, what would be the be better long-term solution for the city uh, to establish that uh, skill set internally or to uh, be provided by somebody else? Okay, but, but getting back to the, um, <clears throat> the the whole system, then, do we re repeat the the? overall inspection on a periodic basis or only when changes are made to the system? Uh, we'll, we'll need to be repeated on ongoing basis. Okay. And, and then as we schedule that, will that be based on, do we basically go back to the first segment that we did in the first go around and then just go by the oldest video or do, they, do we get strategic in target areas where we found problems and then areas that we know for a fact are going to be good or they're newer? then we would just eliminate those from inspection? In long term, you will have to do, you have to do both. You have to uh, uh, do the strategic uh, targeted uh, review based on uh, uh, the problem area. Also, you will have to go back on ongoing basis in, uh, in uh, up to a longer time frame, but to make sure that you are catching all of those preventive needs, what you would not catch any other way. 
And it seems like the real value in this system is real time. Basically, you run the thing, you find a problem, and you fix it. But historically, it becomes less and less valuable because between between uh, two rainy seasons, sure. you could you could have a clean pipe, and by the next year, it's it's a problem. Correct. It will be more challenging now in the beginning, <coughs> when based on this uh, so much new information, the city is just starting this many uh, new programs, uh, like uh, the spot repair. Uh, you just approved a very, very aggressive spot repair uh, program exactly for this reason, that uh, uh, when uh, this inspection will show that you have um, 50 location, which must be that are uh, um, uh, structurally deficient or they have a uh, offset, and uh, they pose um, a imminent risk for SSO. Then, based on our agreement with the baykeeper and industry standards, you have to fix that problem in 90 days. And uh, you say difference uh, time frame set in one uh, year if uh, uh, those are not imminent failure, either you have to fix in two years or to come back with another inspection after a year to confirm that steel is a stable defect and nothing uh, can happen. Well, to address all of those uh, needs now discovered and uh, as uh, the result of that uh, overall inspection, will take a very concerted uh, effort for the next two years until somehow the city will catch up with many of this work which will need to uh, be done now. In longer term, that uh, basically those peaks will basically just will be nev leveled out and will be a more uh, um, pre-planned, pre-programmed kind of activity. Even then, will be a certain percentage of reactive emergency things, but hopefully that will be much less as percentage versus now, until after the city will catch up. I will just say, just to show you that this really is working, that uh, I just want to take the opportunity to say that uh, last year, after many years of 50 and 40 SSOs in a year, last year were only just 18, and uh, up until uh, today, this year, only just nine SSOs were experienced by the city, and this year were two months uh, without any SSO, which was the first in our history. That uh, I just want to compliment uh, the uh, hard work that uh, the sewer division really is doing. Do, do you know of the uh, the uh, SSOs that were, I, I, or, SSO, or problem areas that were identified, how many of those were identified because of the video versus other things like a giant sinkhole was on top of them? Maybe you can answer this question. Then. Three. That was Great a answer. pretty <laughs> precise answer. <laughs> I cannot top that. Okay. Um, okay. I, I also had a question regarding the um, the uh, contract for oversight of the system. Uh, initially, in the first contract, seventy-five thousand dollars was allocated. Um, we only used thirty-six thousand. So I was wondering how that particular contractor is is billing. Is it based on trouble spot that was identified and they were called in to, to uh, comment on? For the prior phase, uh, uh, wasn't any uh, contract entered uh, in for uh, project management in, uh, and support. Uh, two different uh, sewer experts supported us for uh, uh, different tasks and the department asked them during that time to perform very specific tasks uh, to support us during uh, the, up to this point. Okay. Because I, I was looking at what that broke down per mile uh, of, of sewer that was inspected, and it's uh, dramatically different now with this new uh, allocation of 97,000. It, um, for, for the remaining, um, 
20 something miles, it's, it seems like a lot more expensive for the amount of work that's being done. Yes, but uh, uh, you are absolutely right uh, in the sense that this work and support is not really just for the 22 miles. It's for the whole system. Now is the key to make sure that uh, is that searchable database is <coughs> available to us in a user-friendly way for the whole system, not just for the 22 uh, uh, miles, but the whole system. And also the consultant uh, right now will review that uh, 50 locations for uh, the most severe classifying defects for the whole system, not just for the 22 uh, miles. That this really is a little bit a misrepresentation of the effort needed uh, it's very critical to have this data uh, available to us in a usable manner. This is a huge quantity of data. And uh, uh, the, you want the data to be useful uh, for uh, uh, our planning and uh, uh, of CIP and maintenance activity. And the consultant uh, helping us to make sure that uh, is easily searchable. The department doesn't have that. That work is highly technical. Also is uh, very highly technical work to uh, review and to uh, uh, assess based on the industry standard if uh, the, the contractor classifying that defect in a right way. They are certain industry standard. They are fine difference category and how they are uh, what category they are including is very critical and important what kind of follow-up action uh, will require and important for us to have that kind of technical expertise. Uh, this expertise will, not, will need to be nurtured and improved in uh, uh, the city. But this is a new activity for us, and it's important for us uh, uh, to have that kind of uh, expertise support available. Okay. And so then the previous work that was done for the uh, 36,000 was not related to quality control of the video. It was something else. Was also to a certain degree, but was, was based on more task-oriented that, that they were asked uh, to help us to, uh, to assess, but uh, uh, how much percentage of the system already was uh, inspected, uh, certain um, uh, selected uh, quality control also included some quality control if uh, uh, the database meet the set expectation of the city or not, and also uh, they reviewed some of uh, uh, the video themselves and made a, a recommendation based on that review also. And um, Mayor Ruane asked previously about the diameter of the pipes that we were looking in, in the video, and you mentioned that uh, there were laterals and mains. So the 85 miles that we're, that we're quoting currently, that is all mains and laterals, uh, or lower laterals, I guess they would be? Is that what's included? It's just mains. Just mains? Yeah, mains. Okay. Yeah, we, there's no existing data on or historical files on which houses were given the correct specified clean out uh, that gives, that we take the jurisdictional responsibility for as for maintenance or for clearing a blockage or considering that. Um, you can't get a main camera down a lateral. You have to use a smaller lateral camera, which, say that you have one. which we have. Okay. Yeah. So is there any plan for creating a catalog of those videos? There are 1,900, there's 1,900 sewer line segments. And um, since we don't know the exact number, we believe it to be, uh, last time we thought, possibly around 30%. But the, if we were to take that on, that would bring a, a new discussion on, on, on resources to to, to have a preventative maintenance plan. Since we don't know where they all are at, it would be tough to do that. We, the, the, the ones that are problems we know, and I have a preventative maintenance program for us to uh, remove the roots and do some of the things that we do in mains. 
on the smaller four inch laterals. Uh, so there is a there is a preventative proactive solution for that. But if everyone in the city were to install laterals, let's just say, uh, over a five year period, that would have a significant effect. And it, it is our plan to video inspect our, uh, the laterals for which uh, the city is responsible for. Okay. And, now, oh, and okay. also, uh, just to remind you that uh, you authorize uh, the development of a uh, uh, private letter policy. Yeah, where is and that, uh, that is, <coughs> is uh, the consultant provided us with, the first, with a first draft uh, and uh, uh, will be our intent to bring back to you uh, some recommendation in the next uh, uh, many months. Okay. Um, okay. And, and it sounds like uh, there probably wouldn't be a whole lot of value in, in having that information because most of most of, or the majority of the uh, those laterals are the responsibility of the homeowners, and I'm assuming that. Our, um, our agreement with the Baykeeper doesn't hold us responsible for any SSOs that occur because of the laterals? Uh, they are not holding us respons uh, responsible for any, any mm -hmm. SSO which uh, are taking place on private lateral. But the city is responsible uh, for uh, SSO on uh, lateral, lower lateral, for the city uh, took responsibility of, okay. which is about 30% of the uh, lateral, how uh, Dennis Bosch said. Okay, well, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for indulging me. Uh, anyone else? There you go. Uh, to the chair, going back to the 22 miles, just so I understand too, is um, d due to the system or not having the high tech stuff in place, it was an assumption of around 60 three miles. We're 22 miles short. If, when I was reading before, if I'm not mistaken, in um, the state complaint or in the quality board, there was an allusion, they alluded to about 77 miles that we had in the town, in the city. So I'm trying to wonder how they came up with about 77, but we were at, at two different numbers. Now, granted, I understand <coughs> that doesn't mean it has to be exact, but there's a wide enough difference that how, how did they figure it out in 11? And we're now coming back and obviously are short 22 based on data that we have that we've implemented um, and now and, and when did we come up with we we're missing 22 miles uh, our process with the regional board and I will go back and but I'm pretty sure that's how if that's what you remember that's the mileage what was included in our Don't agreement go off my memory, though. that was based on uh, our information provided to them and uh, that really meant uh, but that process took place <coughs> in 2009, 2010. And that was the level of uh, knowledge of our system uh, at that time, and that information was provided to them. Uh, last year was really finalized our uh, uh, GIS information system, and that is the uh, most reliable information what the city has. Is there a deadline for this taping to be concluded, the videoing? As yes, it is. Uh, it is included. Well, was included in uh, is included in our agreement with uh, uh, the baykeepers uh, that based on our initial contract, all of the video inspection has to be finished by uh, end of June of uh, this year. Of this year. So this month, all the videoing has to be done, and we're short 22 miles. Is what we're saying. Uh, that was in included in our agreement, uh, knowing that uh, uh, it's more mileage than how initially was uh, intended to, the city uh, uh, informed them and uh, uh, asked them to consider that is more mileage to uh, perform with the inspection on than initially uh, assumed and uh, they agreed with a time extension of end of July and this our intent to finish this uh, inspection of uh, the whole system when by did end we of find, July. When did we realize that there was 22 miles that we needed to deal with? Um, a few months ago. What's a few mean? Just help me that, because to me a few means two. Um, end of February. Or February. Thank you. 
I appreciate those succinct answers. <laughs> Thanks. Um, okay, so we have till the end of June. So how are we? July. Oh, July now, because we've asked for an extension. So have they been, have the video folks been proceeding? Have they been going? Because I'm thinking now in my mind, I'm going, that's what that was. But this was on a weekend, I think. So are they working, or is it just weekdays? Is it weekdays? Is there one crew? Is there how many crew? Uh, how they, are we doing this? Because obviously there's a short period of time now. Correct. In the last uh, uh, month or so, uh, they had uh, three crews working on an ongoing basis, only just during the weekdays. The city did not authorize any work for them during uh, uh, weekends. They, uh, they are going with about uh, three miles a week and based on uh, our estimate and their estimate, they will be able to finish uh, uh, the work by the end of July. So we've embarked upon this a couple of years ago, but now we're having three crews coming out. So what a layperson would say is somehow we got behind because now we're having three crews come out. I don't know if that's normal, standard practice, that three crews are devoted to taping, but I think obviously we're on a deadline. So we're having to step it up in order and use their resources in order to meet that deadline? Uh, the resources, uh, the unit price is paid, uh, the same unit price is paid to them today uh, than uh, how much uh, was uh, paid for linear fit of video inspection four years ago. Doesn't cost us any more money, the city pays them the same uh, unit cost. Okay, and, and you, in your report about the, I'll call it consultant, they manage, they review, they determine the most severe, they verify the quality control, they schedule, uh, and they're um, inserting the database, which I believe is a CMMS. They're going to help schedule the work. So they're really doing most, a lot of this from start to finish. And on the CMMS, my memory's going back to this is a system that has been in place now for a little bit. Um, and then it got an upgrade in order to help even have it have more options, even though the whole department wasn't up to speed, but in this division that they are. <clears throat> and now I thought we had a management analyst that was coming on board uh, in order to help with the CMMS system, in addition to our staff. And now we're having a consultant also help in this because it's too technical. Just to uh, specify, uh, this project um, is, uh, uh, will result in a searchable database how the city can uh, use uh, this information. Um, the CMMS is a uh, management system which is uh, up and running in, uh, uh, in uh, sewer division uh, in the last started in 2008. Uh, for certain uh, uh, tasks. Most uh, um, aggressively, uh, the CMMS uh, was implemented for proactive uh, maintenance planning activity beginning of this last January of this year. The management analyst, um, even if the department had uh, uh, this management analyst uh, in um, our budget for uh, a few years now, uh, the position wasn't authorized and uh, the department uh, uh, had our management analyst on board um, beginning one month ago, about one month ago. Okay. And yes, the consultant uh, uh, expertise is necessary uh, to provide um, very highly technical support for uh, this project. And uh, it's our uh, uh, expectation that in time the department will be able to um, develop uh, through training uh, the skills necessary to provide uh, uh, higher level of support for those ongoing uh, video inspection needs for the city. Okay, so we got the CMMS, and I want to get off that, we'll save it for another time. And, uh, it, and obviously there's already support that's required data-wise, you know, an ongoing annual. 
um, that we weren't, I wasn't fully aware of the cost, but I am now. And now the CMMS is still not, and we're having to have an outside consultant that's going to assist in this. I guess where I get a concern is that we bring on a program, as I've said before, we don't have it fully up in all the departments, we increase it. Uh, now it's too technical, we need to bring in people to get us up to speed. Um, I just get concerned with costs, that's the bottom line. Um, on this uh, consultant that you have here, um, is it, has this person or this agency assisted us in other support efforts in the department? Uh, yes, uh, they are the consultant uh, uh, who is helping us developing uh, the private letter of policy also for the city. So they're also doing that, that as well. Okay. I, I guess I get concerned and I also know where I kind of feel I'm a little bit of a box in the sense that we have a deadline and in a sense it's got to get done but in essence it costs more and we need more assistance in order to get things in place. So I see it as almost a vicious circle of costs of consultants, which in effect go to the ratepayers. These are one of my concerns I have and this is where some of the questions and, um, and I know it's very technical and I know it's not easy and as you alluded to earlier, the SSOs are dramatically decreased without all of a lot of the stuff it's going the right way, probably by managing the crews, getting them to the hot spots, doing the proactive things that we should and need to be doing. And with the credit of the staff, they are making progress. And they have come significantly than where we sat a couple years ago, in my opinion. And I think you, would, you alluded to that. So when we start having all these costs and all of these, I wonder if we're not, you know, to me sometimes it's back to basics, getting the job done making sure we have the means and to provide what the staff needs to get the job done. So sometimes I see we're getting all of this stuff. I understand some of it's required, um, but I think we're getting ahead of ourselves. I think we're getting into the systems that we still continually need assistance, which causes us money and consultants. That's just my quick overview based on the staff report and what I've heard tonight. Harry. There's not much left to ask. I just, I would like a clarification. You said at one point that, if I'm correct or not, if the five, every five years we have to do the video, is that a state law? Is that what you said? Or we have, I'm sorry, it got lost in all the. The five years uh, was included in our contract. That, uh, that's how uh, was uh, the contract uh, agreement uh, with uh, uh, the contractor back in 2007. Okay. Also, it is a, uh, a state requirement uh, when uh, uh, the inspection needs to be done and is included in our agreement with the baykeeper that the video inspection of the system should be done by uh, June of this year. Okay, and then when that is over, do we have, is there a state requirement that we have to do it again within a certain time period? I have to, uh, yes, it is, but I am not certain exactly what that requirement okay. uh, is. I would prefer to follow up with clarification on, the, on, on that uh, aspect without to uh, answer your, your uh, question. Okay, thank you. And then the, my other question, kind of alluding to what the gentlemen were um, asking about, the program or the, all the data that we're going to receive and the expertise that the other companies, the consultants are bringing to us, are we training anyone in staff to deal with that? Because mm -hmm. as we go forward and we make repairs, it's going to change what the data is. So. Are we looking forward to doing that, or is it cheaper to have a consultant come by once a year, or what, what's the thought of all that? Uh, would be my assumption that a certain degree of high expertise, uh, the city will need to be relying on an ongoing basis, time to times, just to make sure that the city will be up to the latest requirement uh, uh, in the same time. Uh, right now, the management analyst who is on board uh, uh, is uh, acting as a project manager in essence for this project. 
and working direct, directly with the consultant, and Dan is uh, working directly with the consultant, and it's our intent to really uh, create that uh, expertise in-house also, uh, will be our intent to provide also training to uh, other um, classification in the city to uh, have a better uh, understanding, including at uh, lead man level and uh, uh, other classification in uh, sewer division about uh, the industry standard, how they can use that information for uh, uh, preventive maintenance and uh, uh, to program and to plan the needed uh, actions. Okay. It, it's a lot and there's a lot going on, but I think overall we're going in the right direction. There's a lot that ha we're playing catch up basically. Uh, from my little speech from last time about 85 years that we basically did very little as a city and now we're having to catch up. So it, it's, it, I personally think we're going the right direction. Thank you. Good, anything else? I'd just like to say that uh, the SSOs going down as much as they have is very gratifying. I just uh, want to issue my frustration again regarding these cottage industries that are out there that are suing municipalities up and down the state of California when and many hundreds of thousands of dollars that we've had to pay uh, to outfits like the Baykeepers should should be paying for these and should be increasing this project, but unfortunately, it's not. So it's a frustrating situation, and uh, we're going to work very hard from a legislative <coughs> standpoint to see what we can do about that. So having said that, uh, we do have uh, three resolutions um, to adopt here. Would anyone like to introduce, or are there any more questions? Michael? Through the Chair. I, I was just going to comment, um, <coughs> Council Member O'Connell's uh, question prompted me. Uh, I, I remembered something that I had read, and I, I believe that the state requires us to have an action plan, but it does not specify specifically what needs to be in that action plan. Um, but looking at, at what I read in terms of industry practices, they're the only two methods that are available to us in terms of doing physical evaluation is either crawling down there and looking at it or sending a camera in. And so at least for this first go around, it, it seems like uh, video is, is the way to go. Going forward, I think uh, we, could, we, we won't be forced to do this, but uh, where we are forced to do it, I'm hoping that we do start developing um, some expertise. Uh, this is a great learning opportunity. Uh, I know that you guys are stretched pretty thin, but um, I think there's a lot of information to be gleaned by going through this process one time and hopefully uh, as we go forward bring more of this in-house. So uh, with, with that comment, um, I will uh, introduce uh, the first resolution increasing <coughs> the capital improvement project appropriation. Council Member Salazar. Aye. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Council Member Medina. Aye. Mayor Wayne. Aye. Would you like to introduce one? Authorizing the city manager to amend the contract with Relea, uh, formerly JF Pacific Liners. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Council Member Medina. Aye. Council Member Salazar. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye. Here we go. You want to do I'm going to let the ladies go. <laughs> Okay, I'll uh, introduce the third resolution, authorizing the city manager to approve a contract with Homes <coughs> International in an amount not to succeed $97,000. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Council Member Medina. Aye. Council Member Salazar. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye. Item 10B is adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a contract with the San Bruno Park School District to provide an after school recreation program at Bel Air School. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. Um, this item is to authorize the City Manager to execute an agreement with the San Bruno Park School District to provide um, an after-school program at Bel Air School. The Recreation Division staff has established an excellent working relationship with the San Bruno Park School District, and we have been able to assist the district on many occasions by providing after-school programs or summer programs at their request to benefit the children in terms of educational, supervision needs, etc. 
Um, two recent and very upcoming of these, is by as long as I have an opportunity to talk about them. Um, next week, the city staff will be providing a robotics camp over at El Crystal School that the uh, school has, has asked us to help put on. And um, we're very excited about that one. And starting in September, um, with, the, with the addition of sixth grade at Parkside School, many of the parents came forward and asked us to put on some after school programs at Parkside School um, that will include um, supervision, different types of activities, allow kids still to participate in sports programs or other after school programs, but essentially to provide a supervised, healthy space. We have talked to the school, they um, are in favor of it and they are providing um, program space for it. So there's a lot of, of times when the city has been able to, to work with the school district and to assist them in their programming. As you remem may remember, um, during the 2010-11 school year, the city entered into a three-year agreement with Allen School to provide the After School in Education and Safety Program, ACES. Um, ACES program is a result of Proposition 49 from the 2002 ballot, a voter approved initiative. And it expanded the Before and After School Learning and na Safe Neighborhood Partnership Program. Essentially what it does is it establishes a um, local after school education and enrichment programs um, between the schools and community resources. And the city has been able to offer that. Now we have just finished our second year. It has been extremely successful. We have rave reviews from the parents and the school administration. We have met our program goals, our budget goals. Um, it is in place and we are serving approximately 87 students every day from the last bell um, until 6 p.m. And we've been doing that very successfully. The district has operated a very similar program, uh, another ACES program at Bel Air School for several years. And they have used a third party private vendor um, to operate that program. Um, according to the Bel Air administration, that vendor um, operated at least seven after school sites throughout the state. They had a site in Santa Rosa, they had a site in San Bruno, and then at least five sites that they know of in Southern California. Um, that company, midway through this past school year, um, had financial problems with their administration and they were um, unable to fulfill their contract and so they backed out of the contract with the school district and the school district, because of, our, of the city's success at Allen School, has come to us and asked us to take on the ACES program at Bel Air for next year and the two years thereafter. In addition to the Bel Air ACES program over the past few years, um, the city has operated a fee-based program. Um, it's a, $125 per month, again from the end of the school, uh, last school bell until 6 p.m. each school day. And many of the students are on scholarships. Some, many of them do pay the, the $125 per month. But that program has been in existence and it serves approximately 15 students on a daily basis because the ACES program has not had capacity to handle all of the school, um, all of the needs of the neighborhood children in terms of after school programming, supervision, enrichment activities, et cetera. So where we are coming to the city council tonight with a recommendation um, to enter into an agreement for, for the city to take on the ACES program, we would still offer the, the fee-based program under the same conditions um, <coughs> because the ACES program will not be able to accommodate all of the needs of the neighborhood. The terms of the agreement is that the district would be paying the city $7.50 per child per school day up to a maximum of $106,875. Um, those funds will cover the costs of staff, um, equipment and supplies and will also provide the city with $16,000 um, or approximately $16,000 of administrative costs um, for the program, essentially for the recreation division supervisor and managers time and the office time 
it takes to administer this type of a program. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have <coughs> about this program, but our recommendation is to enter into an agreement for the after school program at Bel Air School. Sure. Any questions for Randy? Do the chair. Um, just in the agreement, uh, looking under Section 3, Cities and Responsibilities, I do notice that it talks about the city and the personnel having the material and the equipment, putting together a program in various aspects. Um, in the next page under Section C, it talks about a collaborative program planning and development process um, with parents, youth, and school site representatives. But then under Section 4, District Responsibilities, Item B, it says district shall have the final program uh, development approval. So it seems like we're facilitating it, we're having collaboration, but however, they're really, we, they're the final say then? Am I, am I reading that incorrectly? Or the final say is by the district on what program the city offers? No, it's an excellent point and you're, you're reading exactly right. Technically, the district has the, con the, um, the grant through the state of California for these funds, so they have to have the final approval. However, staff, city staff, um, we'll work with the parents to talk about what interests there might be, what special programs. Um, in terms of providing after-school enrichment activities, there's a wide variety of, act <coughs> of activities that will go on. And we will be asking for the parent involvement. Are there special things that you'd like to see your children learning? And we work with our recreation contractors or contract other contractors that might be in the, in the uh, area to come in onto the campus and do these things. However, we do have to run out the curriculum we develop pass the school district and they have the final say of if it's approved or not. Okay, and then uh, on section F, it says the district shall be responsible for the security and safety of the children each day until they check in to the program. So is that for me to assume then the city assumes a li uh, liability for the safety of the, the youth from the time they're in the program until the time they get home? Until they're, picked picked up up or until they're picked up. And they are picked up on site? They're picked up on site. They are not allowed to walk home? They are not allowed to walk home. If there's a special circumstance, we will work with the, with the parent directly and get the permission slips and those things, but we do not want that. We want the parents to pick them up on site. But you are reading it correctly that um, the district has a responsibility until they check in. And one thing that we do at Allen School, and we, we've already talked to the people at Bel Air and we would continue the practice, um, we need an absentee list of all of the kids from the ACES program, all of the 84 children or so that are enrolled in our program. We need to know if they're, if they're there each day because within a few minutes of the program starting, we take role and if there's a child not there, let's check the absent list. If they were in school but they're not at our program, we tell the district office, which is still open at that time, and it's their responsibility to find out what happened to that child. Once they check in with us, then it's our supervision. Our staff will handle the supervision of that child until they're picked up. Okay, thank you. Michael. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering, yeah. so, so the way it was structured before, the school district got the grant, they paid a contractor to come in and run the program. Now the school will get the grant and they'll pass that through to the city and the city will provide the program. Is that gonna, and it's, basically um, cost neutral to the city. The grant will cover all costs. Will the city have to hire additional staff to, to staff this program? We do hire some additional staff as well as um, sometimes enter into uh, a contract agreement like we do with all of our recreation instructors. Many of our recreation instructors work under a contract. So as I say, employees, I'm talking about both part-time employees as well as independent contractors. Mm -hmm. We will hire them. Um, the contractors are coming in. Maybe you have a specialty in speaking a different language or teaching art or uh, robotics or something like that. You may come in and teach that for an hour um, every Thursday or every day for three weeks in a row and then you're gone and, a, and another specialist will come in. The part-time staff will be there from the start of the school day until 6 p.m. In terms of budget, um, that is all figured out into this agreement. And as I said, the $106,000 that the city re receives will cover the cost of all staff, whether they're part-time or contractors, all equipment, um, all supplies, and give $16,000 um, back to cover the administrative costs 
um, that we've had so far. Um, now finishing the first complete year of the Allen program, we actually were able to generate more than the $16,000 um, to cover the administrative costs. We're going to take the remaining portion of that and put that back into supplies and equipment to save some of the costs next year for the ACES program as well. Okay. And as a percentage, you know, off the top of your head, what, how much goes to administration versus? 15%. 15%. And that's part of the contract from the state. Okay. And it, does the school district get any administrative overhead for handling the grant? They do. That's taken off of the top. That does not mm -hmm. impact these numbers here. I believe it is 5%, but I can go back and double check. Essentially, it's the difference between the 112,500 and the 106,875. So approximately $6,000 off the top. I think it's okay. about, I think that's 5%. Makes sense. And is the 106, is that the same, um, the same price they were paying the, uh, the private contractor? I have not seen okay. that agreement, but I would assume so because under the grant agreement, the district is allowed a maximum of 5% overhead and the rest would have to go to, to the services. And the, the vendor, in this case the city or previously the outside vendor, um, the maximum there for administrative overhead is the 15%. So I would assume it's the same amount that was offered previously. Okay, thank you. I would, if I can just point out, it, it's almost exactly the same agreement that we have with at Allen School. Um, there's a difference of $450 because the, um, the district made a mistake when they applied for the grant in Sacramento. Um, so this, this agreement is $450 more, but the terms of this agreement are almost exactly the same as the one we have with Allen School. Okay, thank you. And any other questions? Action. I'll introduce uh, the resolution for approval. Council Member Salazar. Aye. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Council Member Medina. Aye. 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 Item ten C is authorized fireworks stand permits for twenty twelve upon finding that the non profit organizations meet the requirements of resolution two thousand eight fifty nine at ordinance number seventeen hundred. Honorable Mayor and Council, back in April, 17 groups <coughs> took out applications to have a fireworks booth. Each of them returned their paperwork to my office in May. After my review, the police and the fire review, all of the applications also. Last Monday, I met with Council Member O'Connell and Vice Mayor Ibera, and we went over the applications. And on Tuesday, a mandatory safety seminar was held where every application, applicant was in attendance. I'm here this evening to ask for your approval of the fireworks applications and answer any questions you might have. Any questions for City Clerk? Michael? Through the Chair, thank you. I, I was just wondering, historically, have we ever had uh, any, any one of these, um, the applicants, the, the grandfathered ones, run afoul of any of the rules that we've uh, laid out for them? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have. We have okay. had, um, we've had embezzlement and it's been by more than one group. It's been by two. Okay. Well, that, that's sad, but I guess that's something that's beyond our control. Thank you. Any, Any other questions? questions? Mm -mm. So I suppose a motion. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, me to it. <laughs> I just wanted to add, I think that the, the way that it affects us is that there was a, um, I believe, a late payment situation of the amounts due to the city. Is that, is that accurate? Correct. Um, but that, that was corrected and <coughs> amounts due to the city were received. Okay, I'll move to approve. Second. Motion second uh, on the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Got it. Item number 11, report of commissions, boards, and committees. There are none this evening. Item 12, comments from council members? Anyone? Okay. Item 13, we will going, be going into a closed session. 
And uh, this is in uh, a closed session for conference with real property negotiator pursuant to government code section 54956.8. Property is parcel numbers 020-013-250 and 020-013-260. Agency negotiator is the city manager. The negotiating parties the City of San Bruno and Martin Regis San Bruno Associates LP and under negotiation price in terms of payment. There won't be any uh, city attorney. Just, just a, uh, just a point that uh, this is technically a special meeting that we're going into for closed session, so it's not part of this meeting. Okay, and there won't be any uh, additional uh, uh, action to approve this evening. But uh, before we do that, I'd like to adjourn the uh, city council meeting to the next meeting on June 26, 2010. And now we will go into closed session. All right. Okay. Meeting adjourned.